Hello, my name is Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing an unhaul. However, this is not the footage where I will be talking about the books that I'm unhauling, but I figured I'm going to do some speed footage of me taking the books off my shelves. I'm going to go like into more of why I'm doing this huge unhaul and talking about each of the individual books like later in this video, but for now just enjoy this little footage. So it is now another day and I am here to actually talk about all of the books that I ended up unhauling. I really want a fresh start when I move into my new apartment and I really want to change my approach to reading. Just thinking a lot about like consumerism but also physical space and the amount that I'm reading. I don't actually have the need to own every single book that I read and sometimes there's books that you read and you don't feel a strong emotional connection to them. And you know you're never going to go back for them. So for me, I just feel like why am I holding on to these books when I know that I might not read them or I'm not connected to them in a way that is like strong enough that I would mind getting rid of it. And as I go forward with purchasing books in the future, I'm going to definitely change the way that I do that. I still do love collecting collector's editions for my favorite series, books that really touch my heart, authors that I adore and are all to buy authors from me i will always support their works i'm going to continue to buy the books that really pique my interest that that i really feel strongly connected to and that i want to keep on my shelves but i have these two big bookshelves right now and i don't want to like have to keep heading shelves because i do live in a city and space is tight space is tight oh my god there is a bug crawling in my ring light and i see it's it's shadow I don't know what I'm gonna do about this. Do I just ignore it? There's a book. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we're just gonna we're gonna handle that. All right. Well, that is taken care of. But anyways, 
back to unhauling. I'm gonna try and buy the books that I like physically know that I'm going to want to keep on my shelf for a long time. And all of these books that you see here are books that have made the cut. So basically the books that I was displaying on my upper shelves anyways were books that I really adored and wanted to keep. My strategy is also like I do like requesting ARCs for review from publishers and then I will review them and I will pass them along to a friend and if I really really feel connected to the book then I will go and purchase a copy. Um, for books that are like the next in a series that I adore, I probably won't request ARCs or early copies for those. I'll just stick with reading the finished copy when it comes out and that way I can annotate it and not like have to transfer annotations between an ARC and a finished copy. And yeah, so... That's just kind of my my thing. Right now I still have so many unread arcs from ALA just because I got so, so many arcs, more than I could physically read, and I'm not actually obligated to review them or anything like that just because I got them in a conference, not directly from a publisher. So, yeah. And I also wanna talk about my Kindle. <laughs> so I've had this Kindle for a year. I got it because like I wanted to read Smut on here, but I've been coming to realize that like I really don't mind reading on an e-reader. I haven't tried reading too many fantasies on here but I feel like if I like don't like reading fantasies on Kindle like maybe it's just something that I have to overcome so I'm gonna try it out and I so far have been reading some of the e-arcs that I have on here that I haven't touched in a while and the Kindle is just great and I just think it's an underutilized tool because it's it's this tiny versus all my books of everything. So I want to also start getting more ebooks from my library, which I've had Libby for a while because I use it for audiobooks, not for ebooks. And I have really stopped listening to audiobooks because I used to listen to them on my walk to work and I just kind of wanted to listen to music instead during that time. I don't know, I'm not that big of an audiobook person, but I do like reading in any format, so I think I'm gonna try and just stick to this Kindle more. It's great, you can also read it while like lying down in bed and you don't have to have the light on, which I think is a very big perk because sometimes I like to just like read or scroll on my phone as I'm like about to fall asleep, so it's kind of a goal. So I'm using Libby, my library has a great selection. I already have so many books on hold because they're books that I'm interested in but that I don't know if I necessarily would be interested enough to go and buy a hard copy or it's just a book that I know that I want to read but I don't, wouldn't necessarily want to keep for forever. And I, I, I guess I could kind of go on and on about this but I feel like when, before I joined booktube I was the type of person that I would want to read a book, I would buy it and then I would finish it and then I would buy the next book that I want to read. I just bought one book at a time as I was reading. Maybe if I went on a special trip to Barnes & Noble, I would get two. And then as I started booktube, I just started accumulating books and books and books and not reading them and then I had this huge unread book pile which some people, they want to have a collection where they just have everything at their fingertips and they can easily reach for a new book to read and that is completely fine and valid but for me, I just feel like to keep my collection under control, I really kind of like that buy as I read type mentality and I still have so much that I haven't gotten to yet because I bought it and then I didn't read it immediately and I just feel like I want to be buying books as I know I'm going to be reading them. Yeah, and then just in general, reading on my Kindle, trying to save space, trying to save money, just trying to be conscious because after a few years of reading 100 plus books in a row, like I, if I continue that pace for five years, like I do not physically have room for 500 books. I just don't. Okay, so I think that's enough ranting. So I'm gonna talk about all of the books that I'm unhauling. I'm pretty sure there's over 100, so I'm literally not going to give any kind of synopsis or anything about it because, yeah, but I'll talk about whether or not I read it and why I decided to unhaul them. Um, so I'm gonna start, I think, with all the arcs that I have, and I'll just start with arcs. These next arcs are just like arcs that I got at ALA that I don't see myself getting to in the foreseeable future and I will be passing them along to other people that want to read them more than I do. So you have The Herd by Andrea Bartz, Love Sold Separately by Ellen Meester, Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer, We Are Blood and Thunder by Kesa Lupo, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, Girl from Nowhere by Tiffany Rosenhan, If I Never Met You by Mari McFarlane, Greythorn by Crystal Smith, which I kind of am interested in reading the first one, Bloodleaf, which has been out for a while, I haven't read it yet, 
so uh, there's no need for me to hold on to the sequel and if i really want to read it i can grab it from the library the secrets of love story bridge by phaedra patrick lyceum girls by kate Pentecost, The Return by Rachel Harrison, Race the Sands by Sarah Beth Durst, Rebel Wing by Andrea Tong, Ink in the Blood by Kim Smedjka, The Astonishing Life of August March by Aaron Jackson, Aggie Morton Mystery Queen, The Body Under the Piano by Martha Jocelyn, Harley in the Sky by Akemi Dawn Bowman, The Best Laid Plans by Cameron Lund, Even If We Break it by Marechke Nietzsche-Kamp, The Circus Rose by Betsy Cornwell, Diamond City by Francesca Flores, and Hood by Jenny Elder Moak. And then literally a pile of graphic novels that I just don't see myself getting to anytime in the near future. Oh, one last arc that I don't see myself reading is Between Burning Worlds by Jessica Brody and Joanne Rendell, and this is the second book in a series. I don't have the first one, and I don't have any plans to pick up the first one anytime soon. This next pile are arcs that I have read, and I don't really see the need to hold on to arcs that I've read, so I'm going to pass them along to friends for them to read. So we have The Princess Will Save You by Sarah Henning, The Jewel Thief by Jenny Mobley, The Betrothed by Kira Cass, The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones, A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kemmerer, Kemmerer which I feel like this is like <gasps> shocking because this was like such like a hot arc at BookCon 2019, but I'd rather someone that hasn't gotten a chance to read this book yet gets it, and then I am keeping a Curse of Dark and Lonely, so I will eventually pick up A Heart So Fierce and Broken in hardcover and have it batch my set. I don't need to hold on to two copies of this book. Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angelas, which I really love this one, but again, I just want to give someone else the chance to read it. And buy the book by Ameta Salad. Okay, so now I'm going to move along to books that are finished copies that are standalones or parts of series, but I think these are mostly standalones that I am going to be parting with. Catching Stars by Kayla Keenan, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Apertelli, which I do really like this book, but again, if I ever want to reread it, I feel like I'd be fine rereading it on my Kindle because I tend to like prefer reading contemporaries and stuff on there. Kind of the same thing with to all the boys i've loved before by jenny han i feel similarly wayward son by rainbow rowell this is the barnes noble exclusive edition it's really pretty but um this book was not good so well, why hold on to it nixia by scott retkin i think i bought this like on book outlet i still don't know what it's about so why keep it a study in charlotte by Brittany cavallero i liked it but i haven't continued on with the series which the next one would be the last of august but again these are pretty popular so if i felt inclined to pick it up i could just do it through my library viper by bex hogan spin the dawn by elizabeth lim all the light we cannot see by anthony dewar which this is like a beautiful historical fiction book and i'm probably going to send it to my grandma if she hasn't read it yet but i think she has but yeah, um, because I've already read it, I don't see myself like rereading a lot of historical fiction. Like things that I'm going to reach for for rereads are like comfort reads, like my favorite fantasies and contemporaries, not really historical fiction. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, which I this is one of my favorite um, classic books. But again, like I don't feel the need to have a physical copy of it. I would probably reread it digitally. Oh, this is this is an arc that I missed, but They Wish They Were Us by Jessica Goodman. They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. The Foxhole Court by Nora Skavik. Amber and Dusk by Lyra Celine, which I have read before. Bloom by Kevin Panchetta and Savannah Gancho. The Beautiful by Renee Abier. The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. The Vanishing Deep by Ashley Schulte. Carry On by Rainbow Rowell, which <laughs> I do love this book, but Rainbow Rowell has done some problematic things lately, and Wayward Son kind of ruined him for me, so I think it's just time two part ways. The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is like a beat up huge bind up that I got in college. So it's three books in one and it's just so demotivating to be like reading a book and you you feel like you make absolutely no progress. So if I were to reread The Lord of the Rings, which I could see myself rereading The Lord of the Rings in the future or making my boyfriend read it because he loves The Hobbit, um, I would just pick them up in individual copies. Four Dead Queens by Asher Schulte in the Alcrate edition, which I do want to read but could probably do so digitally. Roar by Cora Carmack. And finally, Night of Cake and Puppets by Lainey Taylor, which is a companion and it's really pretty, but I haven't even read the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy, so I'm not like super attached to it or the characters in this, so I don't feel the need to hold on to it at the moment. 
I have this Barnes and Noble's collectors thing of the picture of Dorian Gray and other works by Oscar Wilde, which like it's very pretty, but like I don't need to hold on to it to read all of his works. I can easily get them digitally. Um, and I have read some of his plays in here as well. Actually, I think I read these plays digitally, so like I have this and I didn't even read it. So. Saga Volume 1 by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples, which I do want to continue on with the series, but I have read Volumes 2 and 3, I think, um, digitally, so I would just continue on that way. Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, which I read for school, and this, this copy is literally, like, pretty much ruined, so. Yep. Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. Oh, here are the other two books in the All Boys I've Loved Before series. P.S. I Still Love You and Always and Forever, Laura Jean by Jenny Han. Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young, the Owl Crate edition. The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee, which I did enjoy. And then The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee, which I never got to because I heard that it wasn't that good and I just never wanted to pick it up again. So, here we go. And Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts by Kate Raculia. Okay, so now this might be the most controversial part, and these are like complete series that I'm unhauling. So we have Every Heart of Doorway and Down Among the Six and Bones by Shane McGuire. I did really enjoy these, but I don't feel the need to hold on to them as my library has all the books in the series. Okay, so next I'm getting rid of Dragonfly in Amber, Voyager, Drums of Autumn, The Fiery Cross, An Echo in the Bone, a Breath of Snow and Ashes, and Written in My Own Heart's Blood. So these are all the Outlander series. I am keeping the first Outlander book because I do really enjoy it. I'll keep something on my shelf from that series. I adore the show as well, but like I'm never ever going to reread these. They are gigantic. They're so long to get through. I'm going to read the new book when it comes out after probably reading a lot of spark notes on whatever happened in the series since then, but like I just don't foresee myself rereading this whole series. Even though I did have a really great time when I reread when I read them initially. So that kind of also brings me to the next series that I'm unhauling, which I don't know. Actually, let's save that let's save that one for last. So okay, random, but I found this other copy of Wayward Sun that I'm unhauling. Um, the series that I read a while ago, Rebel of the Sands by Eldon Hamilton, which is Rebel of the Sands, Traitor to the Throne, and Hero at the Fall. Next, I am unhauling An Ember in the Ashes and A Torch Against the Night by Saba Tahir. I adore An Ember in the Ashes, one of my favorite fantasy series. Actually, this book was like the first YA book along with Red Queen that I had picked up when I first started getting back into YA in college, but um, they have new covers out now, so I'm going to pick up the new ones instead so I have a full matching series. Speaking of other books, speaking of Red Queen, I'm going to be unhauling the whole Red Queen series. I have two copies of Cruel Crown for some reason. Red Queen, Glass Sword, King's Cage, War Storm, and Broken Throne. And I did kind of have like a very emotional attachment to this series for a while because I really, it's really like what got me back into reading YA along with An Ember in the Ashes. But like I did reread it maybe like two years ago and I just know that like objectively it's not to my taste anymore even though I did enjoy my experience while reading them. And there's a lot of books and I just like don't see it as something that I have as much of an emotional attachment to anymore, so I'm going to get rid of them. Oh, also Broken Throne, which I never read, and the collector's editions, as pretty as they are, I don't, I don't, do I need them? I mean, they are really pretty. You can see, like, the wheels in my head, maybe, being like, maybe I shouldn't throw them out, but, like, no, I'm just, it's time for them to go because... I just doesn't spark joy. <clears throat> okay, the next series that I'm unhauling is the Shatter Me series. So Shatter Me, Unravel Me, Ignite Me, and Restore Me. I am keeping the fifth book that I have, um, and I will read that eventually, and probably read the last book as well. But again, this is a series I thought it was good. I liked it, but I don't have enough of an emotional attachment to it that I'm going to want to keep it forever, you know? So just unhaul it. Okay, and so coming to the last series that I'm unhauling, it is the Game of Thrones series. So we have a Game of Thrones, a Clash of Kings, a Storm of Swords, a Feast for Crows, sorry, and a Dance with Dragons, as well as this gigantic coffee table book for Game of Thrones. 
a night of seven kingdoms and fire and blood and i just i bought these and i was like yeah i'm totally gonna read them like i love game of thrones so much i want to know more and i have never ever once had the inkling to like go and pick them up like i just haven't wanted to and to me that just shows that i'm not really into game of thrones anymore i think the ending of the show kind of left a bad taste in my mouth even though i will be reading the next books if they ever come out but i don't feel the need to hold on to the series because i don't think i will ever reread them even though i did enjoy them and i do actually have this collector's edition of game of thrones that my friend got me for my birthday and i might collect these as well but i don't like feel the need to hold on to the whole series in the floppy paperbacks that are kind of grungy anyways so for now they are they're going and that is that all of these books are going to be going to good homes i will make sure that i'm either going to give them to friends maybe sell some of the collector's editions pass them along to people yeah like they i'm just trying to come back to life with this fresh mindset on reading trying to just be like mindful of my consumerism on books i don't need to buy every single book that i read and trying to just to read more digitally read more using my library and other resources like that that are at my fingertips and also requesting arcs for books that i want to read but i don't know if i'll want to like buy them or not until i get a finished copy so with that that is all i have to say um if i unhauled your favorite book sorry but i just don't want to keep it and that's life everyone has their own opinion and we should respect everyone's opinions so please make sure to like comment and subscribe if you liked this unhaul and have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one